Let's make our very own musical Christmas star. The Pico star. It's got two modes. Color mode. And motion sensing playback mode. It's a nice project to put on your Christmas tree or at your front door. These are the parts in the kit. PCB, capacitor, buzzer, resistors, IC socket. There's a little programming socket. Some transistors, photo transistor, coin cell battery holder. That's a CR2450. And we also have a tactile switch and the LEDs. Let's get our resistors and form the component leads. This is a one meg resistor, brown, black, green, gold. To pinch the resistor and bend the leads down nice and firmly, you need to align this with the circuit board where it says 1M. We push that in nice and flush down as low as it goes and we bend the leads out at 45 degrees. So grab your iron and solder, put the iron tip down flat against the pad, introduce the solder, remove the solder and leave the tip there for another second while it sets in place. Repeat the process. If you lift gently, it forms a nice cone shape. So repeat this for the 4K7 resistor, which is yellow, purple, red, gold. There's three of these. Now go to the 10K resistor, which is brown, black, orange, gold. And then we have the 39 ohm resistors. These are orange, white, black, gold. Now let's solder these and trim them off with side cutters. Make sure you get adequate coverage of the pad so that there's no part of the pad that is left without solder. Now trim these off with flush cut surface side cutters. Make sure you're not too close that you destroy the pad, but you also want them down close enough that you can put other components over the top if need be. Always hold the lead so that it doesn't go on the floor. Uh, it's a bit of a safety issue if you get the metal leads in the carpet uh, or people come in without shoes on and they stand on them. They're a bit like pins, not a good experience at all. So hold the leads and make sure they go in the bin afterwards. There we go, that's the resistors done. Now do the capacitor labeled 225. If the solder doesn't stick to the pad, you can rub the tip backwards and forwards. I call this cut like a knife. This helps move the solder over the pad so you get complete coverage. Now it's time to do the transistors. There's five of these. You need to space the leads out so they fit in the holes on the circuit board. Push it in nice and low you might want to wiggle these a little bit so that they sit a bit lower. And when they're through, you can bend a couple of the pins so that it holds it in place. But try to keep it nice and central and make sure that you've got the flat aligned with the silk screen pattern. Repeat this for all of the transistors. Then solder these in place, making sure that you don't bridge or short circuit the pads together. And trim them off. 
So now is a good time to check the uh, whether any of the components are sitting through flat or not. And uh, I like to call it reheat and reseat. You'll see I'm putting a bit of pressure on a resistor there. And that's allowed me to uh, push the pin through a little bit further. Mind you, um, if you're just using your finger, you might burn your finger if you hold it for too long. So uh, sometimes it's good to put something else under there. Um, maybe if you use side cutters like I'm doing, put the side cutters underneath and that pushes it through. It's important not to put too much pressure on before the solder is melted. Otherwise, you can end up breaking the pad off the circuit board. We've got a photo transistor here and long lead through square. And it should have a little flat on it as well. Make sure it's sitting down nice and flush and solder that in place. Now put the buzzer in place. It doesn't matter which way it goes. Make sure you don't bend the pins on the back. You might need someone to help you hold them in place. If, if you bend the pins, they're likely to snap. Just solder them as they are. Make sure it's nice and flush. If you need to, reheat to reseat the buzzer so it sits nice and flat on the PCB. Make sure to trim these nice and low. Next, we'll do the LEDs. Long lead through square. We're going to put in the green LEDs first. Make sure they're sitting nice and flush. So you can see I'm just bending over one of the leads. I like to solder just one lead of an LED and then reheat to reseat it just to make sure that they are sitting nice and flat. Then solder off the second pad of each LED, making sure that you don't heat up the first pad, otherwise it'll drop out again. And then trim the leads. It's time to put in the battery holder. You might also need someone to hold this in place for you. Try not to burn any of the other components on the PCB. Now it's time to fit the red LEDs. Here I'm soldering these LEDs with a bit of pressure underneath so that they seat correctly. I do this by applying solder to one of the pads and then quickly, while I've still got heat there, pushing my finger underneath the LED and then removing the soldering iron so that it sets in place before soldering the second lead. Once you've soldered these in place, go ahead and trim all of the leads off. It's now time to solder the blue leads in place. Also trim off any of the unsightly parts of the PCB. 
When you place the IC socket, make sure you get the notch in the right direction. You can bend over two of the pins to hold it in place and then solder. Next, trim flat the pads underneath the tactile switch and solder this in place on the same side of the tactile switch. We're almost done. Check over the Pico Star and make sure everything is in place. If you need to reseat any LEDs, you'll have to heat up both pads of the LED at the same time while putting some pressure underneath. Optionally, if you'd like to do coding in Assembly or C, you'll need the programming connector so that you can plug it into the computer via the USB programmer. You need to make sure that these pins don't pop out. A good way to do this is to plug in the USB programming cable. So plug the cable in before soldering. Congratulations, all the soldering is complete. Now put in the battery and the microchip, making sure that you've got the alignment marks in the correct place and all of the pins are going down into the IC socket. There you have it. Thanks for watching.